the hunter and his dying steed by rosanna eleanor Liprahon, read for LibriVox.org by claudia salto woe worth the chase woe worth the day that cost thy life my gallant gray scott the hunter stooped o'er his dying steed with sad dejected mien and softly stroked its glossy neck lustrous as silken sheen with iron will and nerve of steel and pale lips tight compressed he kept the tears from eyes that long were strange to such a guest thou art dying now my faithful one alas tis easy known thy neck would arch beneath my touch thou'dst brighten at my tone but turn not thus thy restless eyes upon my saddened brow nor look with such imploring gaze i cannot help thee now no more we'll bound o'er dew-gemmed sward at break of summer morn or follow on through forests green the hunter's merry horn no more we'll brave the rapid stream nor battle with the tide nor cross the slippery mountain path as we were wont to ride oh we have travelled many miles and dangers have we braved and more than once thy matchless speed thy master's life hath saved and many nights the forest's ward has been the couch we've pressed where pillowed on thy glossy neck most sweet has been my rest how often too i've shared with thee the hunter's scanty fare to see thee suffer want or pain mute friend i could not bear and now thou best in agony as if thy heart would burst and i what can i do for thee save slake thy burning thirst that parting sob that failing glance the pains of death are past thy glazing eyes still turned on me with love unto the last well may my tears o'er thy cold form my steed flow fast and free for oh i have had many friends yet none so true as thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Hunter and His Dying Steed by Rosanna Eleanor Leprahon Read for LibriVox.org by Dom Bombadil Woe worth the chase, woe worth the day, That cost thy life, my gallant Cray. Scott The hunter stooped o'er his dying steed With sad dejected mien, And softly stroked its glossy neck, Lustrous as silken sheen. With iron will and nerve of steel, and pale lips tight compressed he kept the tears from eyes that long were strange to such a guest thou art dying now my faithful one alas tis easy known thy neck would arch beneath my touch thou wouldst brighten at my tone but turn not thus thy restless eyes upon my saddened brow nor look with such imploring gaze i cannot help thee now no more we'll bound our dew-gemmed sward at break of summer morn or follow on through forest green the hunter's merry horn no more we'll brave the rapid stream nor battle with the tide nor cross the slippery mountain path as we were wont to ride oh we have travelled many miles and dangers have we braved and more than once thy matchless beat thy master's life hath saved and many nights the forest sward has been the couch we've pressed where pillowed on thy glossy neck most sweet has been my rest 
how often too I've shared with thee the hunter's scanty fare, to see thee suffer want or pain, mute friend I could not bear. And now thou best in agony, as if thy heart would burst, and I, what can I do for thee, save slake thy burning thirst? That parting sob, that failing glance, the pains of death are past. Thy glazing eyes still turned on me, with love unto the last. Well may my tears so thy cold form, my steed, flow fast and free, for, oh, I've had many friends, yet none so true as thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Hunter and His Dying Steed by Rosanna Eleanor Leprehond, sung for LibriVox.org by Iswa, in Belgium, in February 2015. Woe worth the chase, woe worth the day that costs thy life, my gallant grey. Scott the hunter stooped o'er oh, his dying steed with a sad dejected mien and softly stroked its glossy neck lustrous as silken sheen with iron wheel and nerve of steel and pale lips tight compressed he kept the tears from eyes that long were strange to such a guest thou dying now my faithful one our last is easy known thy neck would arch beneath my touch thou'dst brighten at my tone but turn not thus thy restless eyes upon my sudden brow nor look with such imploring gaze i cannot help no more will bound or dew gemmed sword at break of summer morn or follow on through forests green the hunter's merry horn no more will brave the rapid stream no battle with the tide nor cross the slippery mountain path as we were wont to ride for oh, we have traveled many miles and dangers have we braved and more than once thy matchless speed thy master's life hath saved and many nights the forest sword has been the couch we've pressed where pillowed on thy glossy neck most sweet has been my rest how often too i've shared with thee the hunter's county fair to see thee suffer want or pain mute friend i could not bear and now thou best in agony as if thy heart would burst and i what can i do for thee 
safe slick thy burning thirst. That parting sob, that failing glance, the pains of death are past. Thy glazing eyes still turned on me with love unto the last. Well may my tears o'er thy cold form my steed flow fast and free for oh i have had many friends yet none so true as thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Hunter and His Dying Steed by Rosanna Eleanor Leprochon Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida Woe well worth the chase, woe well worth that day, That cost thy life, my gallant grey. Scott The hunter stooped o'er his dying steed, With sad, dejected mien and softly stroked its glossy neck lustrous as silken sheen with iron will and nerve of steel and pale lips tight compressed he kept the tears from eyes that long were strange to such a guest thou'rt dying now my faithful one alas tis easy known thy neck would arch Beneath my touch, thou'lt brighten at my tone. But turn not thus thy restless eyes upon my saddened brow, nor look with such imploring gaze. I cannot help thee now. No more will bound o'er dew gemmed sward at break of summer morn, or follow on through forests green. The hunter's merry horn no more will brave the rapid stream nor battle with the tide nor cross the slippery mountain path as we were wont to ride oh we have travelled many miles and dangers have we braved and more than once thy matchless speed thy master's life hath saved and many nights the forest sward has been the couch we've pressed where pillowed on thy glossy neck most sweet has been my rest how often too i've shared with thee the hunter's scanty fare to see thee suffer want or pain mute friend i could not bear and now thou best in agony as if thy heart would burst and i what can i do for thee save slake thy burning thirst that parting sob that failing glance the pains of death are past thy glazing eyes still turned on me with love unto the last well may my tears o'er thy cold form my steed flow fast and free for oh i have had many friends yet none so true as thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Hunter and His Dying Steed by Rosanna Eleanor Leprahan Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Woe worth the chase, woe worth the day, That cost thy life, my gallant grey. Scott The hunter stooped o'er his dying steed With sad, dejected mien, And softly stroked its glossy neck, Lustrous as silken sheen 
with iron will and nerve of steel and pale lips tight compressed he kept the tears from eyes that long were strange to such a guest thou art dying now my faithful one alas tis easy known thy neck would arch beneath my touch thou'st brighten at my tone but turn not thus thy restless eyes upon my saddened brow nor look with such imploring gaze i cannot help thee now no more will bound or do jim's sword at break of summer morn or follow on through forests green the hunter's merry horn no more will brave the rapid stream nor battle with the tide nor cross the slippery mountain path as we were wont to ride oh we have travelled many miles the dangers we have braved and more than once thy matchless speed thy master's life hath saved and many nights the four sword has been the couch we've pressed where pillowed on thy glossy neck most sweet has been my rest how often too i've shared with thee the hunter's scanty fare to see thee suffer want or pain mute friend i could not bear and now thou best in agony as if thy heart would burst and i what can i do for thee save slake thy burning thirst that parting sob that failing glance the pains of death are past thy glazing eyes still turned on me with love until the last well may my tears o'er thy cold form my steed flow fast and free for oh i have had many friends yet none so true as thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain the hunter and his dying steed by rosanna eleanor leprehan Read for LibriVox.org by Leonard Wilson of Springfield, Ohio. Woe worth the chase, woe worth the day, That cost thy life, my gallant grey. Scott The hunter stooped o'er his dying steed With sad, dejected mien, And softly stroked its glossy neck, Lustrous as silken sheen with iron will and nerve of steel and pale lips tight compressed he kept the tears from eyes that long were strange to such a guest thou art dying now my faithful one alas tis easy known thy neck would arch beneath my touch thou'st brighten at my tone but turn not thus thy restless eyes upon my saddened brow nor look with such imploring gaze i cannot help thee now no more will bound or dew-gemmed sward at brick of summer morn or follow on through forest green the hunter's merry horn no more will brave the rapid stream nor battle with the tide nor cross the slippery mountain path as we were wont to ride oh we have travelled many miles and dangers have we braved and more than once thy matchless speed thy master's life hath saved and many nights the forest sward has been the couch we pressed where pillowed on thy glossy neck most sweet has been my rest how often too i've shared with thee the hunter's scanty fare to see thee suffer want or pain mute friend i could not bear and now thou beest in agony as if thy heart would burst and i what can i do for thee save slake thy burning thirst that parting sob that failing glance the pains of death are past thy glazing eyes still turned on me with love unto the last well may my tears o'er thy cold form my steed flow fast and free for oh i have had many friends yet none so true as thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain
THE HUNTER AND HIS DYING STEED by Rosanna Eleanor Leprehan Read for LibriVox.org by Maria Casper Woe worth the chase, woe worth the day, That cost thy life, my gallant grey. Scott The hunter stooped o'er his dying steed, With sad, dejected mien, And softly stroked its glossy neck, Lustrous as silken sheen with iron will and nerve of steel and pale lips tight compressed he kept the tears from eyes that long were strange to such a guest thou art dying now my faithful one alas tis easy known thy neck would arch beneath my touch thou'dst brighten at my tone but turn not thus thy restless eyes upon my saddened brow nor look with such imploring gaze I cannot help thee now. No more will bound, Or dew-gemmed sward at break of summer morn, Or follow on through forests green The hunter's merry horn. No more will brave the rapid stream, Nor battle with the tide, Nor cross the slippery mountain path As we were wont to ride. Oh, we have travelled many miles, and dangers we have braved and more than once thy matchless speed thy master's life hath saved and many nights the forest sward has been the couch we've pressed where pillowed on thy glossy neck most sweet has been my rest how often too i've shared with thee the hunter's scanty fare to see thee suffer want or pain mute friend i could not bear and now thou best in agony as if thy heart would burst and i what can i do for thee save slake thy burning thirst that parting sob that failing glance the pains of death are past thy glazing eyes still turned on me with love unto the last. Well may my tears o'er thy cold form, my steed, flow fast and free, for, oh, I have had many friends, yet none so true as thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Hunter and His Dying Steed by Rosanna Eleanor Leprehan. Read for LibriVox.org by Rene Lacroix of Woodstock, Ontario, Canada. Woe worth the chase, woe worth the day, that cost thy life, my gallant grey. Scott. The hunter stooped o'er his dying steed with sad dejected mien and softly stroked its glossy neck lustrous as silken sheen with iron will and nerve of steel and pale lips tight compressed he kept the tears from eyes that long were strange to such a guest thou art dying now my faithful one alas tis easy known thy neck would arch beneath my touch thou didst brighten at my tone but turn not thus thy restless eyes upon my saddened brow nor look with such imploring gaze i cannot help thee now no more will bound or do gemmed sward at break of summer morn or follow on through forest green the hunter's merry horn no more will brave the rapid stream nor battle with the tide nor cross the slippery mountain path as we were wont to ride Oh, we have travelled many miles, and dangers have we braved, and more than once thy matchless speed thy master's life hath saved. In many nights the forest sward has been the couch we've pressed, where, pillowed on thy glossy neck, most sweet has been my rest. How often, too, I've shared with thee the hunter's scanty fare, to see thee suffer want or pain, mute friend, I could not bear. And now thou best in agony 
as if thy heart would burst. And I, what can I do for thee, save slake thy burning thirst? That parting sob, that failing glance, the pains of death are past. Thy glazing eyes still turned on me with love unto the last. Well may my tears o'er thy cold form, my steed flow fast and free. For, oh, I have had many friends, yet none so true as thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.